Bloom News Brief. More info at fullandbloom.com. Guitar Interactive Magazine published a brand new interview with Def Leppard's Vivian Campbell, where the guitarist talked about his Dio days and putting together the Hearing Aid Project, which produced the song Stars, the 1985 charity single for famine relief. On Parting Ways with Dio, Campbell said, I still think there's a lot of misunderstanding out there. For many, many years, after my time with Dio, it was always thought that I had quit the band, that I turned my back on the band, and that was not true. I was fired in the middle of the Sacred Heart tour. I did not want to leave that band. It meant a lot to me. I was definitely pushing Ronnie's buttons in a couple of ways. Number one was with the original arrangement he made with us that he was reneging on. Number two was the creative aspect. I was definitely wanting to explore other musical options, whereas I know Ronnie was very, very set in his ways, and I totally understand that. That's part of what made that band what it was. But for me, there was definitely a clear generational gap. I was in my early 20s. Even when I was fired, I think I was 23. For me, I was still growing as a musician. Whereas Ronnie, of course, was more seasoned in his career. Very set in what he wanted to do. So it was an awkward kind of relationship, musically and personally. But I did not leave that band. I did not want to leave that band. For many years, it was portrayed like, Oh, Viv turned his back, he quit, but that was never the case. During a 2018 interview with Guitar Interactive magazine, Campbell stated, When Ronnie formed the band, there were four people in that room. Ronnie, Jimmy, Vinny, and myself in October of 1982. Ronnie kind of laid it out for us and said, I've left Sabbath. I'm taking Vinny with me. I got a solo deal, but I want it to be a band. I want to present it as a band. I want us to create as a band. And we did. We wrote those songs together. Somewhere down the line, Ronnie never conveyed that to his ex-wife, who was the manager of the band. She never saw it as being a band. She only saw it as Ronnie and whoever the fuck behind him. It didn't matter. But I strongly disagree with that. It really matters. It's like Ozzy Osbourne was never the same without certain people around him. You can't just have a bunch of trained monkeys out there playing these songs. There's something about the integrity of the band, and that's what Ronnie wanted when he formed the Dio band. But his ex-wife, who was unfortunately managing the project, never saw that. Where I have an issue with Ronnie was that he allowed her to break up what was a great fucking band on how the Hearing Aid Project came together during the recording of Dio's third album, Sacred Heart. When we did that, we were at Rumbo Recorders in LA recording the Sacred Heart album. It was a really dark time for Ronnie and for the band. I mean, nobody wanted to be around Ronnie. Ronnie and Wendy had split up. They weren't getting divorced, but they were living separate lives. And Ronnie's mood was really, really dark. And the big difference between the Sacred Heart album and Holy Diver and The Last in Line is that when we did Holy Diver and The Last in Line, everyone was in the studio all the time. We were all there offering encouragement. There was a really good vibe. And then nobody went home early. Everyone was waiting for everything and excited about every little development in those records. When we were doing the Sacred Heart album, nobody wanted to hang around. We cut the tracks and it was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go, you done with me? And it was left to Ronnie and Angelo, our engineer. And it was because of that energy, that vibe that was coming from Ronnie at that time. So it was really, really difficult to make. I'm not saying it's a bad record, but it was really difficult for Vinny and Jimmy and myself, and obviously for Ronnie to make it. During the 2016 interview with My Global Mind, Campbell said, I can honestly tell you that I didn't enjoy Sacred Heart. I don't think any of us did. There were issues with the Dio band. Ronnie was going to write more with keyboards, which Jimmy, Vinny, and I were not in favor of. We felt the guitar was the main focus of the band, as we were a guitar-driven band. We thought Ronnie was trying to overly complicate the arrangement, particularly with the keyboards. They weren't necessarily making the songs better, it was just for the sake of having it in the song. It became more difficult to write songs. On how the song Stars came together, Jimmy and I wrote the song. We didn't write the lyrics, we put the music together. We thought, we're not gonna get this off the ground without Ronnie. We need some clout, we need the name. 
So we went in the studio the next day. As I said, we're in the middle of doing the Sacred Heart album. Ronnie's in a real dark spot. We offer it and we say, Ronnie, what about this? He immediately shuts it down. No interest. So we keep pushing it on him for a couple of weeks. And then eventually he came back to us and said, you know what? Yeah, I'll get on board with this. So he wrote the lyrics for it. On how the musicians were recruited for the Hearing Aid Project, I, with the help of a publicist, we were working with at the time, went to the office every day. She let me go through her Rolodex and look up names. I'd go, oh, John Bon Jovi. I'd literally be cold calling people that I didn't know. I remember talking to John Bon Jovi's mom on the phone. I never got John on the phone. Hi, Mrs. Bon Jovi. I play guitar with Dio. Who? Ronnie James Dio? Who? And I'm trying to explain. We're making this charity record and we'll cover expenses. We'll get some sponsorship. So that was my life for weeks. Every day going into a whole different world for me. Just getting on the phone and calling people. Hi, Neil Sean. Love your journey stuff. Is there any chance you could? Who else is doing it? And the same old thing. Nobody wants to commit until other big names are involved. But I was able to throw Ronnie's name in there. I said, well, Ronnie's doing it. Oh, okay. And calling up studios like A&M Studios. Hey, is it possible we can get a free day in the studio? It's for charity. Hey, American Airlines, is there any way we can? Hey, Holiday Inn, can you? It was something I had never done before, but I spent weeks and weeks doing it and so it all came together and it was just bonkers that it did i remember the day we were doing it at a&m with the film crew in there and the guys from spinal tap even showed up and that made it great because that brought a little much needed humor to the whole situation and all these great guitar players we had ingve there and george lynch and neil sean guys who were just blazing guitar players and i just remember i was so busy making sure that everyone had a limo ride had a flight, had a hotel room, had something to eat. And then at the end of the day, it's like, okay, now you've got to play guitar. It's like, what? A link to the entire interview can be found in the description. More news at bullandbloom.com. Bullandbloom.